During periods of low flow, rivers in central Iowa typically have shallow areas called riffles and deeper areas called pools. Pools typically have low current velocities and bottoms covered with sand or sediment. Of course, these conditions can change drastically during periods of high flow, as indicated by these piles of debris. Width of the river can also change considerably as flow rate varies. The riffle areas that occur during low flow conditions typically have rocky bottoms, are shallow, and have high current velocities. The differences in physical conditions of pools and riffles in turn lead to differences in the macro and vertebrate communities of the two areas. To measure current velocity in pools or other areas of the river where there are no obstructions, we can simply measure the time required for an object to float a given distance. For example, we can measure the time required for an orange to float 5 meters. Use a stopwatch to measure the time required for the orange to float the known distance. Calculate the velocity in meters per second by dividing the distance by the elapsed time. In riffle areas, current velocity can be measured using fluorescein dye. First, measure a 10 meter distance in riffle. Pour the dye into the water as quickly as possible. Use a stopwatch to measure the time required for the dye to move the known distance. Calculate the velocity in meters per second by dividing the distance by the elapsed time. A D-shaped net is useful for sampling macroinvertebrates of both pools and riffles. Here is an example of sampling in a riffle. The flat side of the net is placed on the stream bottom. With a group, it's convenient to have one person hold the net while others work in front of it. Pick up rocks or other debris from the bottom and dislodge any macroinvertebrates on them. Let the water sweep them into the net. Macroinvertebrates are often not immediately obvious, so have patience and be thorough in scrubbing each rock. Set each rock to the side when you're done with it. After you have examined all the rocks in your sampling area, stand in front of the net and shuffle your feet. This will dislodge macroinvertebrates clinging to the bottom or buried in the substrate. Wash out some of the sediment in your net by dipping the lower part of the net in the water a few times. If you've only captured a few things, you can usually transfer them directly to your labeled sample jar. If you have a lot of material in your net, wash the contents into a pan and then pick out the macroinvertebrates. D-nets can also be used to sample in pools where the bottom is covered with sand or sediment. Slowly shuffle your feet in front of the net to stir up the sediment. Continue shuffling your feet until you've reached a desired depth in the sediment, such as 5 centimeters. Since there is little flow to carry organisms into the net, occasionally sweep the net through the water above your sampling area.
your shuffling feet will eventually create a shallow pit in the sediment. When you've reached the desired depth, rinse the sediment out of your net by dipping the net in the water a few times. Empty the contents of the net into a pan. Pick out the macroinvertebrates and transfer them into your labeled sample bottle. A Cerber sampler is useful for sampling macroinvertebrates in shallow areas such as riffles. The Cerber sampler has metal frames defining a collection area and holding up a sample net. The metal frame should be reasonably well sealed against the screen bottom. Avoid placing the sampler on large rocks that would prevent the frame from being in contact with the screen bottom. The opening of the net should face upstream so that the current will wash organisms into the net. Pick up each rock in the sample area and gently scrub it while holding it as far back in the net assembly as you can. Macroinvertebrates are often not obvious, so be patient and thorough in scrubbing the rocks. After you have finished with a rock, place it outside the sample area. After you have examined the entire sample area, Pick up the Cerber sampler and wash the contents into the end of the net. To remove the contents of the net, invert the net while holding it over a pan. A small amount of water in the pan is useful for rinsing organisms from the net into the pan. A squeeze bottle filled with water is also useful for washing organisms from the net into the pan, particularly along the folds. Finally, transfer macroinvertebrates from the pan into a labeled sample bottle.